Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. This week's tutorial is a bit of a fun one. We're going to be making some trenches. These will be modular trenches to complement our uh, sci-fi tower from last week. I had a lot of fun building this one. I did use some different tools this week, so I hope you don't mind. Anyway, well, let's get stuck into it. Now, as you can see this week, we're going to be using this hot wire foam cutting table. Now this one was sent to me by a longtime supporter of the channel, uh, Nathan from Nate's Miniatures. Nathan has a channel of his own on YouTube here. I'll put a link to that at the top here. So go check out some of his terrain. He does a fantastic job. Now he sent me this one after he upgraded to the Proxon, which I can understand why. There are a couple of shortcomings to this little table, but you know, it does the job. Now I'll be using two simple materials today, this 50 mil XPS foam, as you can see here and also some thin EVA foam, which I'll use to add some details to the build at the end. Now I'm just cutting some small bricks here. This is just to give me some lengths that I can cut out my angles with. Uh, now the table, as you can see here, it does have some guides that come with it, but these were really loose. I've used some painter's tape in there just to sort of uh, firm this up a bit so that it doesn't move around. The uh, angles here, I'm not sure how accurate they are, they are, but it really doesn't matter for the build. So long as you're you know, copying the same angles across all of the pieces, it really doesn't matter how accurate they are to 30 or 45. Now tightening up on that one is really simple. Uh, you just sort of push it down, uh, tighten the string, uh, tighten the wire up. And uh, I haven't used one of these before, so I'm sort of winging it. I have seen a couple of people use them in videos before. So I'm just kind of having a go, playing around and having some fun with, with this one this time. I'm just cutting some 30 degree angles here and all I'm going to do is just widen that out so that I can now cut flat pieces which will be around about 8 to 10 mil thick. Uh, these will make up the floor pieces for our trenches. Now as you can see there is 30 degree angles on both sides of these little flat pieces. We are going to come in and cut one of those off shortly just so that these can butt up against each other nice and evenly especially once we put in those magnets. So cutting that was really nice and easy. Just use the guide again here and cut some straight edges. So once you move that wire back to the 90 degree, you'll be able to just uh, slide these through and cut some flat edges on one side. So as you can see there, uh, that's what the floor will look like for all of our pieces. Now for the fronts of the trenches, uh, we're just gonna go in. Again, we're gonna cut a 30 degree angle or thereabouts. And then we're gonna follow that up with a 45 degree angle and that'll give us the two uh, differences for the front and the back faces of the trench. This is easy enough. Uh, I found with this hot wire foam cutter, you had to be fairly quick to get the, the foam into the wire because there is no temperature adjustment on this one, which I think is, as Nathan tells me, one of the biggest shortfalls of this table. It's, it does make it a little bit hard and sometimes the cuts want to melt a little bit extra in different parts. But we managed to get through it. All I did was cut four identical pieces of the front and the bottom of the trench. I will be making another copy after this. So essentially for the entire build, I needed eight of everything. Now you can see with this one here, I did wrestle with the cutter on that piece, but not to worry, the front of it's okay and it's fairly well hidden. I did test it up with my miniatures to see how high the trench was going to be or the wall was going to be. Uh, I felt it was a little bit too high so I trimmed it down a little bit. That's really easy to do. You can use either a knife or your hot wire foam cutter for that. I uh, marked on some one inch grids on the bases here so that, you know, just a little bit more detail more than for the playability of it. This is really easy, especially if you've got a one inch wide ruler. I just went through with a mechanical pencil and added these in. Now, while I'm doing that, I'll just give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much, guys, for your support. Uh, I have managed to purchase a new light very recently just to help out with the filming and get things to look a little bit nicer. I still don't really know what I'm doing with it, but thank you very much. Uh, you've, you guys have really helped me out. As you can see, we've got those all drawn up now. I'm going to get some baking paper here, cut it into some small strips and just using some simple PVA glue, we're gonna glue these together. I found a good squirt of the PVA glue on one side, and then you just kind of rub the two sections that are gonna to glue together. Uh, you just rub them across each other so that you get a good covering of glue on both contact surfaces, and then you can just put it straight down on your mat uh, on top of that baking paper and just pin it in place. 
they'll hold everything where it should be and it should remain flat on the surface. Once they're dry, you can just simply pull off the uh, baking paper from the bottom, it just peels off easily. With this table, the guide at the back here does uh, remove away, which is handy because I need it for this next uh, cut that we're going to do, which is the corners of the trenches that we're making. So this guide I've got here is actually from my bandsaw. It doesn't really matter. This just lets me do the 15 degree angles that I'm going to use for these corners. Now, I believe the Proxon actually has a, a proper groove in the tabletop for a guide such as this to slide in. This one unfortunately does not, but we were able to make it work. Again, I'm just cutting 15 degree angles here so that I can get some nice corners. And not too deep corners. These, this is going to be a fairly, well, a fairly straight across uh, trench, even though it will have some bends in it. So here I'm just testing everything up. At this point, really, it doesn't matter. Like you don't have to follow any particular angles. All you want to be able to do is replicate the angles across multiple cuts. So if you want a deeper angle or a different shape trench, it's very easy to do at this stage just by cutting different angles and having to play around. As you can see, it wasn't hard to build. So whipping up a few of these quickly was not uh, difficult, especially if you're going to you know, experiment and do some different things. So as you can see here, I'm just doing exactly that. Just moving around with the hot wire foam cutter, cutting some different bits off here and there. And eventually I come to this full piece, which I'm quite happy with. Now it's too big, obviously I wanted something a little bit smaller, so I'm going to cut this down the middle in the end. What I'm going to end up with here is two opposite pieces, and this is going to make up one side of my trench. And we're going to make another one of these to make in the back wall of the trench. Now what I did find while uh, experimenting and cutting all these pieces was that some of these offcuts actually fit in there quite nicely. So if you're looking to do something a little bit different, some different shapes, you can just use some of the offcuts to get uh, you know a different look or you know a different sort of trench if you want. Now because I'm trying to make something modular here, I'm going to go for a much more simple shape. Now I'm just cutting the rest uh, of these pieces for the back wall of the trench. Uh, again, it's the exact same cuts we did the first time around, especially for this part, we will be making some different cuts to get the floor pieces the, the right shape and the right size to make it all fit together. But this process up to this point is all identical to what we did in the first four pieces. Once those all start to dry, I then line up the front wall uh, to the pieces that I need to cut for the back wall. And I've just carried the horizontal lines through the floor uh, across this trench piece uh, to get it to sort of all match up together. As a, again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I do cut the long pieces, the long straight pieces down the middle just to uh, break this up into four separate pieces once I glue it all together. So cutting those two long pieces and laying it all out will hopefully make a little bit more sense to you guys. As you can see here, uh, these are the four bits that I'm going to be gluing together. It does all go together, so you will see when you cut them all out and start playing with, around with them. They will all match up together as they're supposed to into one cohesive piece. You may need to do some trimming, especially if you're using a cheap hot wire foam table like I am. There was a, a few little adjustments that needed to be made, the craft knife and also the sandpaper. Gluing this together is much the same as what we did before. It's just white glue, PVA glue, uh, nothing complicated about it at all. Uh, using the baking paper to make sure it doesn't glue to the tabletop and uh, pinning it together to make sure it all stays in place. Now, at this point, I was still thinking my magnets would not hold into the foam with glue. You can't use super glue on this foam as it will melt it. So my only real option, I guess, was, uh, well, the only thing I have is, is PVA glue. So I'm cutting out some end caps here, thinking that I'm gonna glue these on after I put the magnets into the foam, just to help hold the magnets in so that when they do sort of grip together, uh, they don't disconnect from the foam and rip out. So I did just copy out these shapes and cut them out with a pair of scissors. The inside cut here that I'm just about to do, I'm gonna keep these because I'm gonna use those for a little bit of detail on the ends of the trenches as well. So uh, just cut those out and keep those aside for the time being. If you've got stronger magnets than I do, you will definitely need something like this to hold your magnets into the foam. I did some testing on mine and found that the magnets actually were gonna hold into this foam 
and I didn't need to uh, glue those on in the end. Now these little offcuts that we had from the inside of those, I'm um, just marking a little angle or a little curve if you like and some holes. I've got some uh, hole punches here that do a couple of different size holes so I'm just going to use it to make a little bit of a pattern and glue these into the corners on the inside of the trenches. This is just hopefully to give a little bit more detail. I found uh, I needed to back up the a piece of cardboard with another piece of cardboard for those hole punches because it didn't really want to work but we got there in the end and uh, they look pretty good i'm going to set them just inside the edge of the uh, trench here and as you can see they should look okay especially when it gets all put together gluing these was pretty simple i just used the pva glue again and just a little bit of glue on each of the edges that need to make contact and i did go back in after the fact because obviously that's not going to be very strong but I did go back in after the fact and add some more glue in once that had dried. Uh, you could probably do this two or three times if you feel like it's not going to hold, but I found two coats and it was pretty strong, so it was all good. Now, I did still use this little uh, piece here that we cut out for the end cap. I'm going to use it as a template for my little magnets. Uh, I'm using three millimeter magnets here, three millimeter round ones. As I said, they weren't so strong that they would rip each other out of the foam, so this will be perfect. I'm just going to mark some little holes into this template that we've got here and just using a toothpick. I'm going to use the uh, pointy end of the toothpick first and just mark where the hole needs to be and then I'm going to flip the toothpick over and use the uh, blunt end of it to push in a somewhat round hole into the foam there. So that'll make around about a 2 mil hole. Uh, we'll drop some glue into those holes, again just PVA glue. And once we push our magnets in there, they actually hold pretty well in the foam. And once that glue dries, it was enough to keep them in there. And as I said, they don't uh, rip each other out. For the insides of the trench, I'm just gonna use the same template. I've just trimmed it down a bit so it fits in there. But so long as you're copying one side to the other side uh, and everything is lining up, you should be fine. The other big trick is to make sure the polarity of your magnets is correct when you put them in there can be hard to test especially because you can't really put these up against each other once the uh, with that wet glue uh, so uh, a little bit of trial and error you should be able to work out exactly which way these are meant to go once it's all dried up and everything is in place it should go together just as simply as this uh, honestly I was quite surprised and really happy at this point uh, this is you know there's a few gaps here and there and you know not everything is perfect but it looks great so I'm going to dress this up very similar to what I did with the sci-fi tower in the last video I'm going to use this uh, EVA foam here and we're just going to cut down some shapes uh, make them all fit in there uh, if you want to take a closer look at that tower we did it's also modular and I used this EVA foam as well as sprues on that one. I'm not going to use the sprues on this one. I think I like the foam and I'm going to add a little bit more detail with the foam this time around. Cutting the shapes really simple. Uh, as long as it fits on there, you want to fill in most of the gaps, but have a few lines between all of these little uh, bricks that you're putting on. Make sure you can sort of transfer any angles that you've got in the corners. You want to make sure you you sort of transfer transfer those onto these little panels and mix up the shapes to anything from small to large. You know, use long, square, whatever you can think of that fits in there and sort of fill in those gaps. If you've got more greebles and things, you could add a lot more detail than I'm going to on these ones. But this is uh, trying to make this one a pretty quick build here and I think you'll find uh, it works out pretty well. Definitely worth a try if you've got means to do this or something similar. So with the first layer of foam all glued in there, you need to be a bit careful as you're putting it on because it will tend to sort of slide around initially. But with that first lot on, I'm going to go back now with a few of these offcuts that I've got and just cut some really small pieces. And what I'm going to do is just glue those on in a few different places and it just kind of brings everything up a little bit. Uh, I really like this, it sort of finished it off I think rather than having it as boring as it was before. Now I won't be going through all the steps for painting this today, it's essentially just different shades of grey honestly. Uh, if you want a little bit more detail you can check out the uh, tower video that I did last time. It has uh, more details of how to paint this. I did find though that with this foam it really needed that coat of uh, Mod Podge, otherwise it just wouldn't take my primer coats and my airbrush paints. 
see how you go with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, guys. It was a lot of fun. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel and help me to grow and uh, do more of these videos, remember to check out my Patreon or you can jump over to buy me a coffee uh, if you'd just like to make a one-time donation. I really appreciate any support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.